Welcome to DOJ Online Services Trust Online Application Demonstration. In this video you will learn how to easily complete and submit a trust online application to the Department of Justice's back office for processing. To access the DOJ Online Services platform, you need to be a registered user with valid and verified credentials. If you have not yet registered, simply click on register as a new user and capture the relevant information, and follow the prompts to verify all your captured information. For the purposes of this video, we have already registered. Capture your email address or username that you registered with, as well as your password to log into the DOJ Online Services platform. Simply click on the login button, and you will be redirected to the landing page. On the landing page you will have a view of all the services that you can complete an application for, on the left hand menu bar. The profile speaks to who you are going to be transacting as when you are making an application. If in your personal capacity, you will use your individual user profile, if you are transacting as a legal representative, you will use the service provider profile that you have created or been invited to. For this demonstration, we will be transacting as a service provider. To change your profile, you can simply click on the checkbox for the service provider, to switch your profile to the service provider role, you will be prompted with a confirmation about switching your profile. Click on the Yes button to proceed with the switching of profile. Once the profile has been switched to your service provider profile a confirmation message will be displayed indicating that your request to switch to service provider profile has been successfully processed. Simply click on Continue to start transacting as a service provider. To complete a trust online application, simply expand the Masters of the High Court Services menu item and select Trust, then click on Register Trust. You will be redirected to your Trust Online Case History page, where you have a view of all the cases that have previously been submitted or completed using the profile that you are transacting on. To register an application, simply click on the hyperlink Register a new trust. A confirmation notification will be displayed as a reminder of which profile you are transacting on, indicating that you are transacting on your service provider profile, do you wish to continue? Simply click on Yes to proceed. The Trust Online Application process, then gives you a breakdown of different information that correspond to different sections of the application that is required for submission. For the purpose of this demonstration, we have captured the information under each tab and will highlight important information as we navigate through the application. On the Trust Details tab you will notice a red asterisk next to each control indicating that they are mandatory, this applies through the application and labels on the form itself gives you information around what type of information should be captured for a successful trust application. The Trust Information tab talks to the trust details. When indicating the number of beneficiaries, the system will prompt you under the associated beneficiary information to ensure correlation. Simply toggle the appropriate response to the questions asked. Again, the captured numbers entered for trustees, independent trustees, minimum and maximum trustees allowed, the system will prompt you under the associated tabs to ensure correlation. For the applicant details, you have the option of indicating if the applicant is an organization. If yes is selected, you will be prompted to capture the company's information, however in this case we have selected no to is applicant an organization. The system will automatically capture your individual information indicating that you are transacting on behalf of the service provider profile and your individual profile is the applicant. Simply toggle with the yes and no radio buttons which is applicable. By selecting yes, to the radio buttons, the system will automatically auto-populate your information in the associated tab for your convenience. A postal address is mandatory as the applicant. The bank information is not mandatory. However if the information is available, kindly capture and click on next to proceed. The system will verify any South African identification information that is captured, against DHA in the back end. You will then be navigated to the main contact details. The main contact details talks to the main contact for the master's office to engage with. Again, you may toggle with the radio buttons if you as the applicant is the main contact or if an organization is the main contact. We are selecting no in this case, and you will notice the system will automatically auto-populate all your information for your convenience. Simply click on next to proceed to the founders details tab. The system again will verify any South African identification information that is captured, against DHA in the back end. 
It is important to note, each time you click on Next to proceed to the next tab, the system automatically saves the information captured on the previous tabs. You will notice the information on the founder's details has been auto-populated for your convenience, because under the application information we indicated that the applicant was the founder. You do however have the ability to add additional founders as required. Simply click on Next to navigate to the Trustees tab. On the Trustees tab, you will notice the applicant information was auto-populated from the applicant page, and we have added two additional trustees. Because we indicated on the applicant page we have a maximum of three trustees, the system will alert and prevent you from adding more. You will need to edit, by clicking on the green view icon, and update information that is specifically relating to the trustee, for example radio buttons indicating yes or no to independent trustee. For each trustee, the checkbox needs to be checked for by accepting the position of trustee, you are exposing yourself to civil and criminal actions in terms of Section 9 of the Trust Property Control Act, 1988, Act 57 of 1988. A domicilium address needs to be provided for each trustee. Simply click on Add to Update. Once trustee information has been captured, simply click on Next to navigate to the Beneficiary Information tab. The same applies for the Beneficiary tab. You will notice the applicant information was auto-populated from the applicant page for your convenience, and we have added two additional beneficiaries. Because we indicated on the applicant page we have a maximum of three beneficiaries, the system will alert and prevent you from adding more. You will need to edit, by clicking on the green view icon, and update information that is specifically relating to the beneficiary, for example radio buttons indicating yes or no to is mentally incapacitated. By selecting yes. You will notice that additional information relating to guardian forward slash curator forward slash administrator details will need to be completed. The date of birth is also important to indicate if the beneficiary is a minor etc. Because we indicated that there was one independent trustee, the system will force you to capture a beneficiary with this information selected. For this demo, the third beneficiary has been indicated as the independent trustee. In addition, the third beneficiary has also been indicated as the trustee that will exercise direct special personal control to maintain accurate trust records. Once you are happy with all the beneficiary information, simply click on Next to proceed to Auditor's Information tab. The Auditor's Information talks to the auditors that will be carrying out the auditing duties relating to the trust. Because we did not indicate on the applicant details that they would also be the auditors, there was no previous information captured. We captured a different individual auditor, however you have the ability to capture an organization as well and for multiple auditors. Although, it is indicated that the accreditation body is required together with the accreditation number, at this stage we are not validating against the organization. Once you are happy with the auditor's information, simply click on Next to proceed to the Bond of Security tab. On the Bond of Security, an indication of yes or no is required for Bond of Security. For the demonstration, we have indicated yes, and captured the relevant information. Simply click on Next to proceed to the Supporting Documents tab. An alert notification will be displayed indicating all the required documentation based on the information that you have captured on the Trust application. Simply click on the Continue button, and you will notice the structured documents that could be required for the application. The Supporting Documents tab provides the facility for you to download, print, Sign and upload supporting documents that must be accompanied with your trust application for successful processing, based on the information captured. To download, simply click on the download icon under Manage, and the applicable structured document will be downloaded, for example based on the number of trustees added, when downloading J417 acceptance of trusteeship by trustee, there will be three J417 acceptance of trusteeship by trustee will be downloaded with the individual trustees names and information as captured on the trustee tab etc. These documents will be downloaded to your file explorer normally and found under downloads. To add the remainder required documents, simply click on add document. The choose file button will open your file explorer on your computer or laptop where you can select where those files reside that you've downloaded or stored. The solution also provides you with the ability to select multiple documents forward slash files residing in a specific location by left clicking and holding the control button to select multiple documents. Once you've selected all of them, you click on OK. 
all these documents will be added to the grid where you then need to select the category of the document type. Simply click on add to add your documents. Once you are happy with all the documents that you have added, to always check which documents are still outstanding, you can simply click on submit button for a prompt of the outstanding required documents still to be added. In this case we have already added all the required documents, and now we can click on submit to submit our application. On submission, you are prompted with a confirmation notification, prompting you if you would like to continue with the submission of your application, simply select yes to continue. Once that application has been processed, you will be presented with your unique reference number, URN, that will be utilized for all future correspondence relating to this application and that your application has been submitted successfully. You are then redirected to the trust landing page where the case information is displayed in registered applications grid with a status. You can easily look for updates on your case by simply clicking on the hyperlink of the application status where you will get a view of the history of the application and where it is within the application process. In addition, you will receive an email notification indicating that your application has been successfully submitted. That brings us to the end of this trust application. In this demonstration you have learned how to complete and submit a trust application as a legal practitioner and submit the application to the back office for screening.